Hi there, John McAdams here with you again. In this video, I share the results of three ballistic gel tests for the 6.5 Precision Rifle cartridge. So first up, I shoot this load from the Nosler Trophy Grade Long Range Line with their 142 grain Acubon Long Range Bullet. Here's what the bullet looks like. Next, I shoot this load from Barnes from their Vortex Long Range Line with a 127 grain LRX bullet. Here's what it looks like. And I, of course, shoot this Hornady Precision Hunter ammo with a 143 grain ELDX bullet. And that's what the actual bullet looks like. So I did three gel tests with a couple different types of ammo in this video. A very tough copper bullet from Barnes, a bonded bullet from Nosler, designed to still be soft enough to open up at low impact velocities. So the ABLR is a little bit softer than the regular Acubond. And then of course I used the completely unbonded Hornady ELDX bullet. Now I did all of the shooting in this test using my Bergara Premier Divide rifle. This rifle has a 24 inch long barrel, one and eight inch twist rate. I also use my Banish Backcountry Suppressor for all of these shots and use my Garmin Chronograph to measure all of the velocities. I shot all of this stuff into gel blocks 50 yards away. So let's get shooting. We will start with the Nosler ammo, then do the Barnes ammo, then the Hornady ammo. In each case, I will shoot that particular load into the gel, do a brief analysis of how it performed, and then we'll move on to the next load. So let's get started. Okay, here's how the Nosler ammo did in gel. Nice short neck like we like to see, medium size, maybe large-ish wound cavity, peaking around the three and a half inch mark, lots of bullet fragments going everywhere, there, 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 all that. Um, the wound cavity gradually narrows as we go deeper into the gel, and the bullet goes at a slight downward angle, not too bad though, continues to penetrate into the second gel block, stops around the 23 inch mark. I'll pull that bullet out, get you some more info. Okay, I pulled that Nosler Acubon long range bullet out of the gel. As you can see, beautiful mushroom, looks like it came straight out of a Nosler ad. Weighed 88.4 grains, so about 62% weight retention. Expanded to well over twice its original diameter. 0.615 inches recovered bullet diameter in this case. Velocity was very close to advertised. Actually a little bit faster than advertised in this case. This stuff also shot great out of my rifle. Now it seems like this bullet performed close to what I would expect and what is advertised in the gel. It's on the soft side, but the bullet did not come apart. We still had over 60% weight retention at close range. That number will likely increase as the range increases and as impact velocity decreases. The wound cavity was very wide up close with that really high velocity impact. That will likely gradually shrink as the impact velocity decreases, but it's big enough here, I wouldn't be too concerned about it getting too small until we really get out there in terms of range and that velocity really gets slow. Now let's move on to the Barnes ammo. Here's how the Barnes loading performed in gel. Nice short neck, but not a gigantic wound cavity. I wouldn't say it is small, but certainly not as big as the ELDX or ABLR wound cavities. It does not have that distinctive football shape of the ELDX wound cavity in particular. Instead, this one starts off small and gets a little bigger and then is pretty elongated. And it certainly drops off in size as we get deeper into the gel, but there's still stuff going on until basically we reach the end of that first gel block. The bullet has deflected downwards a little bit, continues to go, penetrates completely through the second gel block, and then exits the gel right there, the side of it at about 33 inches of penetration. So I didn't recover this bullet, and I don't know what it looks like, but that is 
incredible penetration. So I'll measure all this stuff, get you some details. Now, like I mentioned, that bullet exited out the side of the third gel block, so I did not recover it. So for what it's worth, I did recover a 127 grain LRX I shot from a 6.5 Creedmoor in a previous test a long time ago. That bullet had essentially 100% weight retention and good expansion. It lost the polymer tip, but that was it. Now, the, this bullet coming out of the Creedmoor started out going about 200 feet per second slower than is the case in this, this test with the faster 6.5 PRC. So the pedals perhaps might have peeled back a little bit farther on the 127 grain barns from the 6.5 PRC, but I'm guessing the bullet would likely look pretty similar overall. Now, the velocity was also a little faster than advertised with this Barnes 6.5 PRC ammo, but it's still right there with what was advertised. Now, this ammo also shot great out of my rifle, very similar to the Nosler ammo in terms of accuracy. But this Barnes ammo delivered very different terminal performance, though. I would not describe this as a small wound cavity, but the Barnes ammo definitely did not make as wide of a wound as what we saw with the Nosler Acubond long range. Penetration was incredible with this stuff though, and it penetrated quite a bit deeper than the Nosler ammo. This is one of the best penetrating loads I have ever tested. Now, like I mentioned earlier, it exited the third gel block after about 33 inches of penetration. So I don't know how much farther it would have gone if it would have stayed in the gel blocks. It's really hard to keep them in the gel blocks when they go uh, real deep like that but it went really deep. And for what it's worth, that 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, 127 grain Barnes LRX ammo I talked about earlier, it delivered about 30 inches of penetration. So still really deep, just not quite as deep as the 6.5 PRC. Back to the 6.5 PRC though. Both of those things, the very deep penetration and the more narrow wound cavity are both common traits of copper bullets like the Barnes LRX, TTSX, etc. Now, just because the wound was smaller than the wound the Nosler bullet delivered does not mean it is bad or it won't work. I actually used this exact ammo out of this rifle to kill an Axis doe in 2023. Not surprisingly, the bullet exited. I did place it properly, just a skosh behind the shoulder as a meat-saving shot, and it shredded her lungs. Now, she took off like she was spring-loaded at the shot, like Axis deer tend to do sometimes, but she dropped barely out of sight. She went less than 50 yards, and she was bleeding freely the entire way. Now, another advantage of this ammo is that since it is lead-free, it doesn't leave any lead in the meat. Even in this case in the gel, it looks like the bullet held together very well, and I did not recover even a single fragment of it. I found the polymer tip in the gel, but that was it. That is also pretty typical performance. Now, every now and then, a Barnes bullet will shear off a pedal or two, but even that is not very common. Now, I used this exact ammo on that Axis doe hunt specifically because it shot so well out of my rifle and because Axis are renowned for their tasty meat and I wanted to preserve as much of it as possible. So it was the perfect choice for that situation. Now, the shot on that Axis doe was not very far either. 50, 55 yards, almost exactly the same distance as I shot these gel blocks at. And, and like I said, it worked great. Now, copper bullets, like Barnes bullets, need lots of velocity to upset. Even up close, you can see it made a more narrow wound cavity, uh, but that will shrink, just like all the other ones, as velocity decreases. These bullets also have a lower BC than what you get with a really sleek lead core bullet. So while it starts out going a little faster than the others, it does slow down faster and it needs that extra velocity for a good wound cavity more than a soft lead core bullet like the ELDX or like the Acubon long range. So the max recommended range for this stuff is probably shorter than what you'd get with the others. But this ammo is great for a situation where you want to preserve meat, great for a situation where you want more penetration, not so good in a situation where you're taking a really long shot. Now let's move on to the Hornady Precision Hunter ammo.
Okay, here is how the Hornady bullet did in the gel. Nice short neck, very impressive wound cavity. Very wide, pretty long. Looks like it maxes out in size between the three and four inch mark, but it's still pretty big out to say seven, eight, nine inches and really starts to drop off between 10 and 11 inches. Lots of fragmentation, pieces of lead there, pieces of the jacket there. Bullet continues to penetrate into the second gel block at which it starts deflecting downwards a little bit. Lose some more of the jacket there. And looks like about 23 inches and change of penetration. So I'll pull that bullet out, get you some info. The recovered bullet weighed 84.5 grains. So just under 60% weight retention. That's a little less, but not that much less than the Acubond long range. The bullet really expanded, but the final expanded diameter was a little smaller than the Acubon long range. This stuff also delivered very close to the advertised velocity, just 10 feet per second slower. So once again, just right there exactly with what the manufacturer claims. Now, surprisingly, accuracy was not very good with this ammo out of my rifle. It wasn't terrible, but the Barnes and Nosler ammo definitely shot better for me out of this rifle. Your mileage may vary, though, with the different rifle. You may get completely different results. Funny enough, you may have noticed penetration was nearly identical to what I got with the Nosler ammo. This isn't the first time I've seen this either. As a matter of fact, in every case where I have tested a Nosler Acubon long range up against a Hornady ELDX for the same cartridge and of similar or the same bullet weights, penetration was either identical or the ELDX actually penetrated a little deeper. That's actually what I observed with the 175 grain Acubon long range versus the 175 ELDX for the 7 PRC, for instance. Back to the 6.5 PRC though. Original ballistics of these two 6.5 PRC rounds are almost identical. Both bullets are designed for the same purpose though. They're soft enough for good expansion at lower impact velocities, but supposedly they are both tough enough not to come completely apart up close. These two bullets go about doing that in a slightly different manner though, but the end result is pretty darn similar. The Nosler bullet did retain a little bit more weight, which should result in increased penetration, but it also expanded to a larger diameter, which should result in decreased penetration. So it's possible those two things canceled each other out versus the ELDX here. Though it is true, one could definitely make an argument the bonded Acubon long range will potentially perform better versus something like a bone than the softer ELDX. All in all, both bullets delivered very similar performance. Penetration was almost identical. The ELDX made a wound cavity that is a little wider. Both were big. The ELDX was a little bit wider. Now, compared to the Barnes load, the ELDX did not penetrate nearly as deep, but it made a much wider wound cavity. I mean, this was a very impressive wound cavity, and it would cause a lot of damage to the vitals of an animal if placed appropriately. Lots of fragments in the gel, though. On one hand, those fragments cause even more damage, create their own little wound channels radiating outward from the main track. That wide wound track, combined with those secondary fragments, will help kill an animal faster. On the other hand, they do ruin more meat. So take all that for what you will. Now, as I've said in the past, results in clear gel like this don't normally translate one-to-one -one into real-world situations on game. Bullets tend to penetrate better in clear gel, but they don't make as large of a wound cavity in clear gel like this versus on a real-life animal. So the results should be taken as a general trend. I'm not saying that if a bullet penetrates X number of inches in gel, that it will penetrate exactly that far in real animals from every angle, regardless of what it hits. It's that if a bullet demonstrates wide, shallow penetration in gel, it will also probably produce wide, shallow penetration in animals. The same is also true with narrow, deep penetration the general shape and characteristics of the wound will probably also be similar. Likewise, if bullet A penetrates better than bullet B in gel, well, that's probably going to be the case in an animal as well. The same will also probably be true for a bullet that holds together better in gel. So take all that for what you will. Let me know your thoughts on this subject. Have you used the 6.5 PRC afield with any of this ammo? How did it perform for you? I welcome your feedback. 
Likewise, leave a comment on this video and let me know the cartridge bullet combination you would like me to use in the next gel test I publish on YouTube. So far, I have published a bunch of other gel tests. They're all on a YouTube playlist for you to peruse. So I'm open to suggestions from you on what else you want to see in the future. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want more content along these lines, visit huntingguns101.com, sign up there for a free ebook on the best hunting calibers. I've also put a link to where you can get that ebook in the video description and in the pinned comment. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.